I'm just gliding this joint in this direction to loosen it up. Now when I was at uni, this is what I was taught. I was taught that mobilizations, which is when you basically press on a bone and you move the joint based on that bone, um, you are mobilizing the joint. And we can mobilize joints into different directions. Uh, we can do you know, posterior or anterior, which is from the back to the front. We can do medial lateral. Um, you know, there are different directions we can apply that kind of mobilization. And we were taught at university that, you know, these accessory movements that occur when we move based on the joint uh, surface alignments will determine the glide we might choose. So if someone's lost, say, extension in a joint, then we do a particular directional mobilization to free that joint mechanically, to allow that joint to restore to full function. And that's what we were trained at university. But very quickly, I came to realize that this wasn't actually completely true. And uh, interestingly, the evidence of this finding initially were coming from a research paper that was done in 2001, which is when I was at university. And this is what's fascinating, and I always say this, is that at university I was taught by physios. And who knows if they were completely bob on with the latest evidence. And even though it's a heavily regulated degree, um, there's still going to be some lag time behind on this and there's still going to be nuanced biases that people have and certain ethoses that people have. We see lots of people out there in the physio world and the health world who have completely contrasting views who are also at the top of the tree in terms of knowledge, in terms of research, in terms of everything and yet they still disagree. So there's always going to be this kind of component that's in there and there certainly was in this component with me at university. So today we're going to look at do neck mobilizations actually mechanically loosen the neck joints? So like I said they had a, a study here where they actually had an experienced physiotherapist actually do neck mobilizations while a patient was in an MRI scanner and they could see therefore the movements that would occur at the joint levels. Now the mobilization technique they used was a posterior anterior mobilization, which means pushing from the posterior, pushing anteriorly. So they were pushing on the back of the neck, pushing forwards. They did this on two different levels in the spine. It was on uh, the second cervical vertebrae, so C2, and on the sixth cervical vertebrae, so C6. And they had five subjects that they did this on. Now, no surprise to me, but a surprise for a lot of people, is that the average amount of movement that occurred on the vertebrae, on the joints, was 0.5 millimeters, which is tiny, like really tiny. If I just do this now, the joints are moving miles more than that. So why don't I just do this if I want to loosen the joints? And why therefore do these mobilizations actually in real world time improve the things that we want them to improve. So why does someone's pain drop after using these type of techniques? Why does someone's spasm reduce? Why does someone actually move better after you've done the techniques? You know, they might come in and go, I can't move to here and here, you know, and they've been doing that as an exercise and then you mobilize and then they go woof, woof, and they're like, whoa, that's amazing. And the reality is that it's not manual. It's not mechanical. This is where the, the, the thing comes in that's very interesting. We think we're pushing the joint, we're moving it so it's stiff, so we'll push it even harder. I'll just make you more sore. What actually it's about is it's about manipulating the central nervous system. So basically we're using a, a mechanical force and then a tenderness that's from that, a pain like a discomfort that comes from that which then your central nervous system, particularly the sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight nervous system, will just turn the volume of pain down because you're inflicting some pain and the body's all about protection and therefore the spasm drops, the pain drops and the movement increases because the pain and the spasm has dropped. So we see this increase in mobility, but it's not actually about the manual movement of the joint. We're just using that as a tool to access the nervous system and then the movement comes. Because if it was about the movement, improving or moving a joint by 0.5 millimeters is not gonna make a difference mechanically. But we see the difference. So this technique is absolutely legitimate. It works, it does exactly what we need it to do. But it's about more about why it works, not about 
uh, what it's doing. So don't get misconstrued on this because that's why there are some practitioners who think, oh, that joint's really stiff, I just need to push it harder. It's a bit like the analogy, which is a silly analogy, but the analogy I use, it's like having a horse. The horse is far stronger than I am, right? I want it to move, so I'll push it. It's not moving, so I'll push it harder. And it just doesn't get me anywhere. Whereas if I can dangle a carrot in front of its nose, it will walk for me. And therefore, that is what we're trying to do here with the nervous system. We're trying to make the nervous system do what it wants to do by manipulating it to do it versus trying to force it to happen. And mechanically, it just doesn't happen. This MRI study concludes this, and this has been talked about and known about for quite some time, but obviously, general public don't know this, and some practitioners may still not fully understand this because if they haven't checked this research out or research like it, since university, they may well not be knowing this information. If I'd never read anything beyond when I was training at uni, I would still think I'm mechanically changing the joints and I should oscillate the joints in these directions for reasons for the movement we want to access. And it's not the case. So this is interesting. Just thought I'd bring this one to attention, but obviously an older study, um, although it makes me sound old when I say it. But uh, that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.